Hey there for Dragonfly and me friends. Thanks for joining me here at another episode of Jean in the Kitchen. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Jean Roman and you are visiting for Dragonflies and me at my YouTube channel. You may also be seeing this for the first time at my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com. Um, either way, welcome. I'm super excited to have you here. Uh, today I am cooking in season and that is something I really enjoy talking about and trying to incorporate. Of course, you know, it can be challenging sometimes, uh, especially when we want coffee or avocados, right? But um, it is spring and right now at the farmer's markets or in our own garden, we have been harvesting asparagus and maybe some young lettuces and other greens. But another uh, crop that we are harvesting right now is rhubarb. Um, I was at the farmer's market the other day and I picked up a pound of rhubarb, a uh, fresh garden picked rhubarb. You can also buy this in some grocery stores if you don't live near a farmer's market. Um, but I always encourage you if you're not growing it yourself, definitely support your local farmers at a farmer's market. So um, before I get moving on, I would be so appreciative if you would hit that subscribe button and hit the like button and even better, all do both of those and leave me a comment. I love hearing your feedback. Um, do you like rhubarb? Have you never uh, eaten rhubarb? Do you not even know what rhubarb is? Did you know rhubarb is a vegetable? Um, I have a blog about how to grow and care for rhubarb at my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com. I will put that link over in the description below. Um, again, if you're a first time newbie here, what I generally do here at my channel is I prepare the meal for you. And then I direct you over to my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com where I provide you the full list of ingredients as well as the complete list of cooking uh, directions and some great graphics to go with that. Um, so be sure to subscribe there, subscribe here, and uh, follow me on my YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, my Facebook and my Instagram pages as well. I do all kinds of cool re reels and I also have a podcast, which I do post here as well. If you don't have time to watch, head on over to uh, Spotify or any of the other platforms and listen, I have great conversations with incredible people. Um, but now let's get into today's uh, recipe. So I am making a strawberry rhubarb dump cake. Yes, it is as sweet as it sounds. So there's just basically one, two, three, four, five, six ingredients. And when I direct you over to my blog, um, I'm, you're going to see my uh, 12 year old son making this dish. This is a delicious, sweet dish. Rhubarb can tend to be a little tart, um, but that's okay. Um, if you like tart, a lot of people do. This recipe kind of blends a sweet tart uh, combination and is delicious. So even if you don't think you don't like rhubarb, you will love this. Um, I am also, this is your first time here, I'm the author of a cookbook, Lovingly Seasoned Eats and Treats, and I wrote this cookbook with a friend of mine during my Mennonite days. Uh, this cookbook is about a thousand pages. It has, oh, I'm sorry, 500 pages with almost a thousand recipes. A hundred of those are my own. And also this book cookbook has an incredible canning section. I'm gonna be providing you all kinds of great canning recipes, how to's. If you uh, follow me, you'll know that I'm teaching several classes at Goldner Walsh Garden and Home, at the Farmington Farmers and Artisans Market, and soon to be listed the Waterford Parks and Rec, Independence Parks and Rec, as well as the Farmington Hills Nature Center. So be sure to go over to my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com to see all of my classes where you can come and actually watch me make this stuff live and maybe even participate. So uh, easy, this is a cookbook is available at my blog at uh, fordragonfliesandme.com as either a soft version, soft cover version or a downloadable PDF. But excitingly enough, you can also purchase my cookbook at Goldner Walsh Garden and Home, as well as a new, a new uh, a retailer is the Dearborn Shop in downtown Dearborn, West Dearborn. And you can also purchase this cookbook at Outback Processing up in Snover, where my old farm used to be. So a couple, and I'm always trying to add more. I'm trying to get it up on Amazon as well. But now let's cook. So I've already made one for you so you can kind of see um, what this is looking like. It is delish. And so I'm gonna just tip that up a little bit for you guys to see. Um, but yeah, let's make it. It literally takes maybe five minutes to put this together. So 
First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get your baking dish. Um, I divided this recipe in half, so um, you can do that very easily. Or if you wanna make two dishes and give one away, it is a little hard to divide the cake mix and the jello. Um, but uh, generally this recipe calls for one pound of rhubarb. So when you go to the farmer's market, you generally purchase it in half pound or one pound bundles. So make sure you ask your farmer's market vendor. So right now I'm gonna take, an one more thing, there are a couple varieties of rhubarb. There's either a real green one, which you'll see on my blog when my son is making this recipe, and there's also a red rhubarb. They're generally the same flavor, it's just more of an aesthetics. So also you can buy bigger, thicker rhubarb or young, tender rhubarb. So for this dessert, um, I chose a bundle that had mostly young tender and most farmers market vendors will bundle them appropriately. If you want to make a preserve or a jam, um, the, the larger chunkier ones are fine because you're cooking it down. This also cooks down, uh, but I just tend to like to use the younger uh, stalks of rhubarb for this as well. If you have your own rhubarb plant, uh, you can watch my YouTube video here on how to properly harvest rhubarb. And yes, there is a proper way. So for the last time, let's get this going. So first I'm going to take my pre-cut rhubarb and I've cut these into about one inch chunks and that's what you wanna do. And you wanna to try to get a single layer of rhubarb, so right like that. Hey friends, there we go. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna sprinkle my strawberry jello. Um, you can use raspberry, but I really do. Strawberry rhubarb is kind of a, you know, they go hand in hand. So you can make a strawberry rhubarb jam, which I'm gonna show you uh, in the next week or so. Uh, strawberries are not yet in season, but I am gonna show you how to make my strawberry rhubarb jam. If you missed my how to make uh, homemade freezer strawberry jam the other day, be sure to head over to that um, because uh, once the strawberries come in season. So let's spread this jello powder evenly over the rhubarb going to distribute that pretty evenly and it's going to go kind of cover and it's also going to fill in some gaps. So there we go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sugar and I'm going to sprinkle that over here. Yes, I know friends. I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh my gosh, that's a ton of sugar. But uh, we had water and uh, it's, it's rhubarb too. So we are getting our vegetables in here. And you know, every now and then it's fun to splurge. I don't suggest you eat this uh, every day, but during rhubarb season, we get rhubarb for two weeks. And maybe again, if you're lucky in the fall, so you can splurge a little bit. So I recommend using a white uh, vanilla or a yellow cake mix uh, to for this dessert. Uh, the key with this too is to make sure that the uh, cake mix is spread evenly. So I'm actually going to take this butter knife and I'm going to make sure that I get that spread in there evenly. And then I'm actually gonna even kinda spread it with my knife. Oops, I want my rhubarb to be a single layer though, but I'm going to get that in there. And then I'm actually gonna, once I spread the water and the butter, I'm actually gonna blend it in again. If you, uh, oops, if you noticed in this, there's a little section where the cake mix is still a little dry, which is fine, I like it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the um, consistency or uh, the flavor of the rhubarb. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your melted butter and you're gonna pour that evenly over your mixture. And I have a handy dandy spatula there to get every single drop. Because what do I always say for those of you who come here all the time, visit me, uh, bacon and butter make everything better? It does. So there we go. And I'm gonna kinda like put that in there as well kind of using the tip of the knife just to open up some of the area, especially where the um, cake mix is in. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my water. And I kinda kinda go around the edges here and sprinkle that on evenly. So again, I want to get that water and butter and I kinda tip it around and you can kinda see how the liquid is flowing about. And then any like bigger chunks of cake mix, I'm going to kind of just smoosh that down so that that liquid can, can impact that as well. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of just put that liquid around again 
to get it evenly distributed. It will bubble during the cooking. And so some of that dry cake mix will, it'll get absorbed in as you can see it did here too. So, all right then, friends, that's it. Super easy, super duper easy. Now I have uh, preheated my oven to 350 and I'm gonna bake this for 45 minutes and it should be done. Uh, you really don't need to, you know, test for doneness or anything. But um, that's it, friends, super easy to do. And uh, now I am going to, uh, do my farewell. And again, if this is your first time here, like I always say, be sure to eat fresh, shop local, and have a happy day. I will see you in the garden or the kitchen soon. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and like button and leave me a comment. Do you like rhubarb? What's your favorite dessert uh, that you make? Or what do you do with your rhubarb? Let me know. I want to hear from you. All right, friends. I'll see you next time. Gene Roman here for Dragonflies and Me. Bye.